So this is the first half of a lecture on gram staining, which is one of the most important and useful techniques in microbiology to begin identifying microorganisms. And so the objectives of this specific lecture are just to talk a bit about the history of gram staining, give you a refresher on the cell wall structures and the differences between gram positive and gram negative bacterial cell walls, and then talk about the mechanism of gram staining as well as the reagents that are used and how these reagents um, can help differentiate between a gram-positive and a gram-negative bacteria. And so a gram staining has been around since 1884 when this Danish microbiologist called Hans Christian Gram developed it. And his original purpose for gram staining was just to make the bacteria he was interested in more visible under the microscope as sort of a simple staining technique um, but what he devised was actually a technique that's what's known as differential because it can divide bacteria into two different groups um, by staining them unequally or unequally in different ways. And so <laughs> what gram staining has been able to do is to divide bacteria into two groups, the gram positive bacteria and gram negative bacteria, because these two bacteria stain differently from each other after the gram staining procedure. And the reason for this is because they have different types of bacterial cell walls. And so just a reminder, you can see a gram negative bacterial cell wall here on the left, which has a thin layer of peptidoglycan in purple, and then has a lipid outer membrane, which is exposed to the external environment which is different also from the gram positive cell wall you can see on the right, which has no outer membrane, it just has a very thick layer of peptidoglycan that makes up the gram positive cell wall. And those differences in the layers and the amount of peptidoglycan in these respective cell walls are what accounts for the differences that we ultimately see in staining during a gram stain. And so in order to do a gram stain, you need several reagents for the whole process to work and to be able to differentiate between gram-positive and gram-negative cells. And the first reagent is a primary stain, or your first stain. Um, it's called crystal violet. It can be seen here, and it's a dark purple, um, almost like indigo bluish dye. The second reagent is Graham's iodine, which is this brown solution here, and that acts as a mordant, or a chemical that sort of fixes the stain in place. And then you also need a decolorizing agent. In most cases for gram staining, you'll use 95% ethanol or um, alcohol for this decolorization step. And then you need a counter stain as well. And so um, safranin is a very common counter stain. It's a red pinkish dye. <laughs> and so the way that a gram stain works at the molecular level begins with crystal violet, right? And so crystal violet is applied to all of the cells and it's a positively charged purple dye. And it can bind really effectively to the negatively charged cell walls of all types of bacteria, whether they're gram positive or gram negative. And so you have your purple dye that's positive binding um, to the negatively charged cell wall of all bacteria and effectively turning them all purple. But in order to make this stick and sort of to fix this purple stain in place, you need to apply what's called a mordant. And Graham's iodine is that mordant in the situation and what it does is basically fix that positively charged crystal violet in place in the cell as much as, as physically possible. And the way that it does that is by combining with crystal violet to make these really big and insoluble crystal violet iodine or CVI complexes. And so at this step, you'd still see purple in both your gram positive and gram negative cells after you apply this mordant. And it's really in the next step where you start to differentiate between the gram positive and gram negative cells. And that's why decolorization is sort of the most important step in this gram stain procedure and why it's very important to decolorize for the right amount of time. And I'm gonna explain why that is. Right. So for gram positive bacteria, 
the ethanol that's used to decolorize um, in this step dehydrates this very thick layer of peptidoglycan that makes up a gram-positive cell wall. And it shrinks the holes or the pores inside that peptidoglycan that molecules can usually diffuse through. And what that means in terms of the staining is that those crystal violet iodine complexes can't get washed out of a gram-positive cell by the ethanol. And so since those CVI complexes can't be easily washed out, a gram-positive cell will stay purple even after this decolorization step. Whereas a gram-negative bacteria responds differently to the ethanol that's used as a decolorizer because it has a different cell wall structure. And so as gram, we know, gram-negatives have that lipid outer membrane on the outside of the thin peptidoglycan layer. And the ethanol used as a decolorizer just dissolves that outer membrane um, leaving the thin layer of peptidoglycan exposed and since that layer is so thin, the crystal violet iodine complexes still have no trouble diffusing through. Um, and so they are lost and washed out and the gram negative bacteria become colorless, right? And so in the decolorization step, gram positives will stay purple because the iodine crystal violet complexes can be washed out. Whereas the gram negative bacteria will lose all of their color because those complexes easily wash out through their thin peptidoglycan cell wall. And since we're left with now a colorless cell, at least in terms of the gram negatives, you have to introduce a new stain if you do want to visualize any gram negative cells, right? You'll still be seeing the gram positives in purple, but in order to be able to see gram negative cells, we introduce what's called a counter stain or another colored stain. In this case, it's safranin. Um, which is a red or pinkish dye, and that just allows us to see the gram-negative cells after decolorization. And so what you would end up with are results that look like this, where your gram-negative cells are stained in pink or a reddish color, and gram-positive cells will remain a deep dark purple.